cancer and biochemistry 14, asparagine and aspartate and vitamin B6. Hello, it's October 3rd, 2018, and I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, here again today in this ongoing series on cancer and biochemistry. In each one of these short videos, I give a very brief overview of the roles of particular nutrients with regard to cancer. Let's pick up the discussion from where we left off in my previous video on the topic, Cancer and Biochemistry 13. We saw that the citric acid cycle here, a necessary and desirable route into the mitochondria, as well as a detour away from the cancer pathway, which goes off to your right. One thing we saw about this pathway is the vital importance of amino acids to the cycle. Remember this diagram from bioinfo.org? Here is the citric acid cycle in the center, and all around the sides we see many amino acids. Where do they come from? Well, you make some of them in the body as needed. However, the rest come from the proteins that we eat. We break down our proteins in the digestive tract. That is true for carnivores and vegetarians and vegans. We all eat proteins, some more than others, and we break them down to amino acids. What do we do that for? We do that partly for this purpose, to have the materials we need to run, to drive, to push forward the citric acid cycle. And why do we do that, you might ask? In order to help fuel the electron transport chain. And why in turn do we do that, you might ask? Well, in order to produce the fuel that the body needs to live, to move, to think, to thrive. All right, where was I then? Oh yes, here we are at the citric acid cycle. So. We are just at the moment that vitamin B7, biotin, as shown here in this eye stock photo, is now helping us to convert pyruvate to oxaloacetate. But what we are still missing are two amino acids to help in that process. Those are asparagine and aspartate. Now you may correctly guess that asparagine is plentiful in asparagus. But let's say you don't particularly care for asparagus. Well, that's okay because there are chemical reactions in the body that can produce asparagine. If we look at this diagram, we can see that asparagine produces aspartate, which is another non-essential amino acid. Vitamin B6 helps us to make these in a process called transamination and deamination. And generally, these reactions are somewhat reversible. I would not go out of the way to add these particular amino acids to the diet. I think it is more important to add vitamin B6 instead. Vitamin B6, as we see it in this Shutterstock photo, is hugely useful in the body and can help in the production of those amino acids. I have not yet talked about vitamin B6 in any of my previous videos. Vitamin B6 includes pyridoxine and related compounds. It is absolutely critical in brain and nerve health. We have seen its benefits in carpal tunnel syndrome and learning disabilities in children. Of course, I never ever use a B vitamin alone because each one works so much better in synergy with other Bs and other nutrients. Vitamin B6 also helps to balance electrolytes and hormones, and I like its effects on the skin. I can hardly think of a more versatile or useful vitamin. In fact, another reason I say this is that vitamin B6 plays some role in conversion of each of the three main food types, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, to get into the citric acid cycle. You may want to supplement vitamin B6 in the diet, and if you do, the first foods that come to my mind are pork, poultry, and fish, but I can also say that beans and nuts and dairy have vitamin B6. However, for specific nutrient recommendations in your particular situation, I would urge you to see a naturopathic physician near you. We have just begun to scratch the surface of the citric acid cycle. I look forward to exploring this fascinating and essential process with you in future videos in this series on cancer and biochemistry. Well, that wraps it up for now. It is October 3rd, 2018. I am Dr. Colleen Huber, and thanks for watching.